monster. Hey guys, Kongo here, and uh, yesterday I made a couple mistakes in my uh, video where I, my tier list video uh, about tier 8 premiums. Um, the first one was I kept, and this one was many a times apparently, I kept calling them this things. Because in my mind, if I know what it is, everybody knows what it is, but that's not true. Alright, there are a lot of casual players out there, the screen is small, maybe they've not seen it much, who knows? So many different variables. And I kept calling them this things. What the heck is a this thing? Well, this thing we're playing now is the Rheinmetall Penzewagen. So there you go. I said it properly this time. Or, or I don't know if I pronounced it properly. But I've actually called it by name. All that aiming just to miss. Wow, okay. Um, but yeah, so. The Rheinmetall Penzewagen. I've, I've called it by name this time. And I need to do that when I do the tier lists. The second thing I did wrong in the tier list yesterday. When we were talking about the tier 8 premium tanks. Was I did not mention the Lance and C, the Dragon Lance and C. And uh, that would have been an S2. That would have been amazing for me. That's one, that's my favorite premium tank right now, and I forgot it. How is that possible? I don't know. But I did. I forgot it. Um, everything else that wasn't named on there, it was because I didn't have one. So if you're like, why didn't you mention this tank? It's because I didn't have it. So there's that. And uh, I think that's it, all I wanted to cover. Oh no, there were two other tanks I wanted to talk about, because they were people were really confused as to why I rated them so low. The first one being the Ariette Progetto 46. The premium auto reloader Italian. Like, why on earth did you put that in a void? Um, and then somebody else in the comments section was like, Oh, well, it's because... It's because he, he doesn't he doesn't take the time to learn how to play it. It's, it's such a shame that people just judge these tanks without actually learning how to play them. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so high and mighty. And and I, I say to that, here's my response to that. No, I have played it. I have multiple aces on, on the tank on the channel. All right, I've played the tank. I know how to play. I do. I would argue I know how to play the tank. Um... But that's not the reason I think it's an avoidable tank. The reason it's an avoidable tank is because this DPM is just so bad. You're putting your team at a disadvantage. If they match you up against even an STA-2, which is a preferential premium medium tank, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Why? Because he is going to be doing more damage than you. Alright? It doesn't matter. He's going to be doing more damage than you. If you both have the same skill, he's going to do more damage than you. If I am in any medium tank at tier 8 and I'm fighting one of those... I'm just like, I'm laughing because I know I'm going to win. It doesn't matter if he's a better player than me. All I need to do is make sure to shoot him twice for every one time he shoots me. And if he decides to empty his magazine at me, then I know for a fact that I'm going to win just by yoloing him. He's like, oh, he's empty his magazine. Now he's got like a 12 seconds reload on his next 90 millimeter shot. Lol. And then he's got another 10 after that and then 8 after that. So I'm going to win this engagement just by yoloing him. So that is why I think that tank is an avoidable tank. And the other tank people were really shocked about was the Jagdtiger 88. They're like, what? The Jagdtiger 88? Why is the Jagdtiger 88 an avoidable tank? They're like, it's amazing. It's got great DPM. It's got decent armor. It's got preferential matchmaking. Yeah, but so does the FCM. has its preferential as well. Uh, the tank is too slow to decide who wins or who loses. You know, especially in World of Tanks nowadays, how many times your team stomps the enemy 15-3? to 3, Or uh, how many times the enemy stomps your team 15-3? to 3? Guess what? The Jagdtiger 88 is not going to have a say in that kind of a battle. Your team is going to win way too quickly, and you're not going to be able to do any damage, or your team is going to lose way too quickly. And maybe you'll be able to do some damage, and then you'll be able to blame your team for losing. But yet again, you don't have a say. You need the enemy to park in front of you. To not track you. To allow you to shoot them over and over and over and over and over and over again. They need to be dumb enough not to shoot you in your lower plate. And you need to be on a map where, yet again, the enemies are going to sit in front of you. So there's so many things, and that's why that's in the bad, not a void category, but the bad category. I think it's a bad tank, but it it does still have its moments. It really does. But that's enough of that. Have you seen how many shots we've bounced or missed in this game? It's ridiculous. Um, but hopefully we're going to turn that around. Nope, straight into the tracks of the E50M. Uh, and uh, we're losing this game quite a lot. But we're going to be doing our very best to try to bring this back. And then we bounce off the back end of the E50M. Oh, golly gee. 
Uh, this tank right here is another one which was bad and almost avoidable, but nowadays I know it's received some buffs, some love. Uh, it's actually really fairly decent. It, it's kind of like a CDC, but at tier 10. All right, you've got fantastic mobility. You're pretty big. You're very HEable. Your gun is a bit troll. And so it feels like a CDC, but at tier 10. But it's still faster and has a better camera rating. And the gun is at least better. But uh, we're getting the sixth sense that people are coming up from behind. So we're going to turn around and make sure nobody's here. Oh, there is. It's a waffle. And he does put a shell into us. And uh, he was he was quick on the trigger. And unfortunately, he was pushed up further than we were hoping he was. And now we've loaded up our HE shells, which are high penetration. Not that it matters. It's a waffle. And we're going to be trying to put them into him. There we go. 389 damage done there. Two more of those shots, and he should be dead. But we've got to be careful here. I really don't want to take a hit from him. But uh, we poke out a little too far. Um, what happened there is I didn't mean to poke out that far. But the servers, I'm playing on the NA server. If I was on the EU, we might have ha not had that issue. But as I when I pulled back... My tank kept driving forward. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And then we put a shell into the machine there. And uh, we are down to two more. Two more APCR shells. And then it's on to Heat and HE. And uh, yeah, this isn't going so well. It's a two versus six engagement right now. And I've decided maybe I can kill off artillery real quick while the Bat Chat does what he does. The Bat Chat's reloading. He's going to run. We're faster than these guys. The machine may catch up to us quickly. But he's low on health, so I think he might be holding his ground. So we're going to go after the artillery, try to get him out of the game here. And we do have a nice shot right here, going to putting it, dunking it straight in. And rolling insanely low. If I wanted to roll for 326, I would have probably shot a standard round. But it doesn't matter, he's dead anyway, he goes down. And now we find ourselves in a 2 versus 5. But people are now capturing the base, and we get spotted. There is a type 5. No, he's dead. Dead type 5, and now it's a 2 versus 4. This is winnable. We just need that bat chat to kind of stay alive. Uh, but we're going to try to take the least direct route possible back to base. We're fast enough to do so. And we're just going to make sure that we don't die here. And uh, we survive this and maybe can win. That's, that's the plan. This bat chat is a one shot for our bat chat. Our bat chat is a two shot. Can our bat chat win this engagement? He puts one in. We miss. Come on, finish him. He misses again. Come on, we got to kill this guy before he gets away. Yes, we're able to. He goes down, and then we're down to our heat shells. And now it's a two versus three, and our guy is a two shot. But there are two people on the cap circle. Sorry, no. One person on the cap circle. Because of that, I do have time. I want to see, is my bat chat going to get the reset off and allow me to do what I need to do? No, he's not. He, I heard him fire about two times, but unfortunately, it sounds like he missed both shots or bounced both shots. So now it's a one versus three. And we still need to reset the cap circle. And here comes a Patton. He misses. We kind of accidentally brake checked him. We got spotted and uh, we stopped. And his shell went in front and he misses us. But now we are down to our last few seconds. We're going to have one shot to reset this base. And we're going in. Come on. Come on. There he is. Line up a shot. Fire it off and we get the kill. A high roll. But he wasn't the one on the cap circle. And unfortunately the game gets capped out. And we're unable to pull this one off. There he is. He's still very healthy too. He sat there, capped the base the entire time while while his team was winning at one point. I think it was 7-2. to two, He still decided he wanted to capture the base. There you go. Um, we might not have been in this situation to almost win that had he joined his team. But regardless, he decided he wanted to cap the base, play it safe, and he gets the win. And we unfortunately lose, but not before doing seven, getting 7 kills, 4,700 damage, and a bit of assist as well. Anyway, guys, that's the replay. hope you all enjoyed. If you did, slap that like button, comment, subscribe. Make sure you go check out Space Bandit Quality Mentality's YouTube's links in the description below. And I'll be seeing you guys all later. Take care, everyone. And have a great weekend. Peace out.